Hi, this video is to help you um, do this lab, identifying prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So hopefully you um, learned a little bit about the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells so that you uh, can better understand what you'll be looking for. And also, um, if you did the reading, that will be helpful too. So once you get to the lab, um, what I would do is I would um, go ahead and pop this out and um, it'll look like this. So I already popped it out and then that way I can have kind of the lab on one side of my screen. And then this is the answer sheet right here. So you'll need to pop that out as well and you can open it with Kami. And then that way you can write on it directly. You could also print it out if that's easier for you. So I've got my lab here. Um, okay, got my lab here. I mean, you can, the lab you're not gonna write on so you really don't have to have it in Cami, but I have it. Okay. Um, and then you've got, uh, obviously we can't do this in person with uh, microscopes and samples. So what I did was I found um, videos of each of the um, types of cells under the microscope. So um, you're gonna go ahead and read this scenario. Um, somebody came into the hospital, they have these um, symptoms, cramping, they had, they had been uh, drinking water from a pond, so we're going to collect some of that pond water and see if that is the reason for their digestive issues. Um, so here is the first um, task, and you're going to be looking at yogurt under the microscope. So instead of putting your... Um, pictures and your answers here. That's why I have this answer sheet right here. So you can do that. And what you're going to do is just click on this link. Oh, so you might have to, if the links don't work, you can just click over here. Okay. And you're going to watch this video about uh, what yogurt looks like. Sorry, that's got an ad, but um, you're going to be doing that. Um, and then you're going to draw what the yogurt looks like under the microscope in 100 magnification and 400 magnification. So this part where it's saying collect the, the yogurt and all that, obviously you're gonna, not going to do it, but you're going to, um, the video is going to show you what it looks like at 100 and at 400. And then you're going to try to complete this table um, to see what kind of, what kind of bacteria do you see? And here's, um, here's a chart to show different types of bacteria. So whatever you see in the, in the, um, the video, you know, if you see, you know, these small little round ones, then you can, um, draw them here, say what the, the shape is called and the um, arrangement. So if, if you see these little small ones, then you'll put round, caucus, and then you'll draw these pictures. And to draw, you can just, um, obviously you can click drawing and then hopefully you can just draw like that, okay? And then if you wanna write in the box, you can click text and you can type like that, okay. When you get to part B, you're going to read this lab. And again, you're not going to be um, doing your own onion cell um, examination, but you're going to go ahead and look at the video that shows that. So I'll, I would go back here, click on the video for the onion epidermal cells, um, and then take a look and see what do those cells look like under 40 magnification under 100 and under 400. So those I'm gonna draw in part B. And under the 400, it says label the cell membrane, cell wall, chloroplast, and nucleus. So those I'm gonna um, label. 
Um, then you're going to look at cheek cells. Okay, so the onion cell is a plant cell and the cheek cells are coming from a person. So that's an animal cell. So we'll sort of look at what are some differences that are between plant and animal cells. And again, you're going to draw them. And remember, if you're drawing under 40 magnification, it's, it shouldn't look the same as the 400 magnification. Um, the 400 should be much bigger because you're um, close up with the, um, with the microscope. It's giving you a closer view, uh, enlarged view. Okay, And also the cheek cell, you're going to go ahead and label the cell membrane and the nucleus. Um, so there's no cell wall, there's no chloroplast for these guys. Then you're going to look at the pond water because remember the person was complaining about their uh, stomach problems. They drank the pond water um, and you're just going to see if you can find any organisms in there that might have caused this problem. So you'll watch the videos and then this site kind of shows you what the different um, creatures that you might find are. So if you can find, you know, a couple, maybe two things in there and try to, um, try to draw and identify them. What is the magnification? What is the organism? If you can look it up and whether it's prokaryotic, eukaryotic plant or eukaryotic animal. And, um, if you're not sure what those words mean, then you want to go back and look at the video or the, the reading. Okay. And then um, these are the analysis questions. So they're just asking, are the bacteria, uh, what were the names? Were you able to see a nucleus in the bacteria? Are bacteria prokaryotic or eukaryotic? And if you know that, if you know what this means, then you'll be able to answer number two, because uh, one of these has a nucleus and one doesn't. Okay, and then, and then these you're going to go ahead and label um, if you look at the reading, you'll be able to get that. Um, what type of onion cell did you observe? So that was like, you know, that was in part B. Um, it talks right here. You're going to be looking, you're going to be looking at, uh, the epidermis, the thin membrane. Um, so you'll answer these questions and then you'll label these two cells, the plant cell and the animal cell. If you want to just, uh, put the text box in here and just kind of label it that way, you can do that too. Um, like that as much as you can. It's a little tricky trying to do that. Um, and then were you able to find any organisms that were on the list of possible causes for this, uh, this ailment? So here's, these are disease causing pathogens. So if you're able to see any of these in the pond water, then that's what you want to identify. And that might've caused some diarrhea, cramping, things like that. Many of them do cause diarrhea, cramping, so you don't want to just pick one, but um, find the one that just fits, seems to fit the symptoms and the pond water sample. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any other questions, please let me know or come to my advisory, uh, my office hours.